Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to you from wherever you are joining the Palestine Children's Relief Fund first virtual benefits. My name is Sara Reyes, chapter coordinator for the PCRF, and I have the honor of welcoming you to our event today. While we would have loved to be in your actual presence, we're very thankful that there is a way for us to be connected to you today. Our supporters, our donors, our volunteers, and our followers from across the world. Thank you for being with us today, as this is an opportunity for us in our 45 minute long program to share with you our accomplishments, our current plans and future plans. And you will hear from our chairman of the board, our president and CEO. And you will also hear special messages from very important friends of the PCRF. We'll also be very happy to share with you some of the faces as they introduce themselves from our volunteer chapters. So without further ado, we would like to go ahead and start with the introduction of our first speaker. He has been a volunteer with PCRF for over 15 years. He's led over 30 medical missions with the PCRF, including missions to the West Bank, to Gaza, to Lebanon, to Jordan, He's worn many hats in our organization, and the most current one now, which we're very proud of, is chairman of the board. It's my absolute honor to welcome and introduce our chairman, Dr. Khaled Abu Ghazala. Dr. Khaled, thank you for being with us today. Uh, thank you, Sara. Assalamu alaikum and Ramadan and Barak to everybody all over the world, uh, whichever time it might be. Thank you. Uh, I would like to thank and welcome everybody on behalf of the PCRF, its board of directors, and also on behalf of our amazing staff, and especially on behalf of the children of Palestine in the Middle East. Uh, this is the first time that we do an event like this because we are, as you know, in unprecedented times. We hope that this will be an enlightening event through which we will learn a lot about the great efforts that the PCRF does to help the poor and unfortunate children on the ground in Palestine and in Jordan and Lebanon in the Middle East. Our efforts have been going now for ongoing for over 27 years. During these 27 years, we faced many obstacles and the PCRF has always come out stronger on the other end. What we face today is an unprecedented obstacle that we're facing with the whole world. And we are sure that with our resolve and with your continued help and support that we will come out stronger on the other side of this. What always helps us come out stronger is the support that we received from you our donors and our supporters worldwide. We're a grassroots organization and we depend on this worldwide support and we're only as strong as you, our communities that support us. All these efforts that we do on the ground and we implement are thanks again to our courageous staff that work tirelessly day and night regardless of the circumstances. They do all this hard work under the leadership of our next speaker who is our president and CEO who will be telling you more about our work on the ground, what we've done in the past, what we're doing currently, and everything that's going on nowadays. We, I would like to ask that you support our work generously today, uh, and God bless you all. I will hand over to our president and CEO, Steve Sosby. Thank you for all your hard work, your leadership as chairman of the board and especially your leadership as a surgeon who comes here and has done dozens of missions, treating hundreds of kids and uh, uh, healing the lives of, of so many children here in Palestine. Thank you so much for that. Ramadan Mubarak, everyone uh, who's watching from all over the world, board members, volunteers, staff, supporters. Uh, during this blessed month, we're entering our last 10 days of Ramadan. And uh, I want to congratulate everybody who's been uh, fasting and enjoying this blessed month. I also hope everyone's being safe during this unprecedented global crisis, this pandemic, which is affecting every corner of the world. I hope you and your families are safe and, and uh, able to overcome this challenge. As Dr. Khaled said, it'll pass. We'll come out stronger for it, but right now we're in the middle of it and we have to, to face our challenges. Uh, Dr. Khaled mentioned the PCRF has been working for 27 years. Actually, this week is the 30th anniversary. This week in May of 1990 is when I first brought two injured kids, Mansour and Sabah Abu Snini, a 10 and 11 year old boy and girl, brother and sister from Hebron to the United States for treatment. They'd been injured in a bombing of their home 
And that was actually the start of PCRF because it was after that that we started, I started thinking about how I could support and um, assist in the Palestinian people, the Palestinian struggle in a positive way, in a way that healed the people, showed love and compassion, solidarity. And it's actually 30, uh, 30 years ago today, and I'm very proud of that. And thank all of you. This is due to the volunteers who take care of our kids, who enable us to do this work. Um, so in since then, since those the Mansour and Sabah first came 30 years ago, we brought a bit about that tonight. Uh, unfortunately, that's on hold right now because of the inability for people to travel, but we still have two kids in the U.S. being treated, and we're the main organization doing that kind of work. In addition to bringing kids, we're going to talk a little bit about the medical missions that, uh, that we do. Is, um, we're the main organization in the world bringing thousands of volunteer doctors and surgeons, nurses who come here, treat thousands of kids every year, and all the subspecialties don't exist. We're going to talk a little bit about that as well. Um, we're the only organization doing that. And we're very proud of that. And in addition to that, I'm standing here in the Huda al-Masri Pediatric Cancer Department uh, in Bethlehem, the epicenter of the, of the coronavirus here in Palestine. And our organization is on the ground every day responding to the humanitarian needs of uh, at-risk populations in the West Bank and Gaza and Jordan and Lebanon's refugee camps. And we're going to talk a little bit about that and how you can help us uh, in supporting the humanitarian work that we're doing here. Uh, I also um, want to say how special tonight is. It's our first virtual fundraising event. And usually at this time, as Sarah mentioned, we're having these events in the States. We're meeting each other face to face. We're having this human bond, which unites Palestinians and people who love Palestine, like myself, uh, in a positive way that where we come together and do positive humanitarian work for the Palestinians. Unfortunately, with the coronavirus, we can't do that. But we put together a very special night tonight, and we hope you guys will be generous and support our work. Um, you know, after Mansour and Sabah went home 30 years ago, uh, I was not sure what I wanted to do with my life. I was a journalist working in Palestine. I had just sent the first two injured kids for treatment, but I didn't know what to do. And I had educated myself on the Palestinian issue. I had read a lot of books, and the main author who I read uh, and most people my age uh, uh, have always looked to Professor Noam Chomsky for his honesty, for his courage, for his issue of Palestine. So I wrote him a letter uh, and I asked, told him I had just brought two kids from Palestine. And should I go to graduate school? Should I, what should I do with my life? I was a young man. Uh, he was my hero. And I never expected to get a response. He was, he was one of the leading intellectuals in the world, but he wrote me a letter back. And Professor Chomsky told me then uh, a message which has stayed true to me today, which is don't give up, stay true to your values and what you believe in and continue to work for justice and freedom here in, in Palestine. And I'm very proud that I've continued to do that. And this organization is doing that because of you and because of your support. So we're gonna start the first video here by leading tonight's activities with Professor Chomsky's endorsement of PCR. Over 30 years ago, I had a small part in encouraging the start of PCRF. Uh, their growth into one of the main organizations on the ground in the Middle East, helping to provide free sustainable health care, urgent humanitarian relief, has been inspiring. They've sent thousands of injured kids abroad for free care, treated tens of thousands more children by sending volunteer surgery teams from all over the world to public hospitals in the occupied territories and Lebanon's camps. And they continue to respond to the crisis on the ground today with the COVID-19 virus by providing urgent aid to hospitals, at-risk populations, and local institutions. Palestinians face the challenge of surviving this virus while struggling for their basic human rights under military occupation. I encourage you to support their relief efforts so they can continue to help save the lives of children all over the region. Thank you. The Palestine Children's Relief Fund. The 
The PCRF is a nonprofit, non-political humanitarian organization with nearly 30 years experience providing medical care and humanitarian aid for tens of thousands of sick and injured children in Palestine, Jordan, Lebanon, Syria, and Iraq, regardless of their religion or nationality. We've received nine straight highest four-star ratings from Charity Navigator and are a grassroots organization with dozens of volunteer chapters all over the world. Your support tonight enables us to respond to the coronavirus crisis in the Middle East, as well as to continue our humanitarian relief efforts for injured and needy children. Thank you, everyone. I am so honored to introduce the fundraiser tonight who has the hard job of inspiring you and hopefully getting you to, to be generous and support our work here. Okay, thanks, Steve. Uh, having a little bit of trouble with, uh, with the A good connection. friend of the PCR community. Uh, uh -huh. Thanks, Steve, for the introduction. Uh, I was able to catch you say the, the hard work, and I found that uh, the work is made easy. I'm just representing the, the amazing work that this organization does that, that speaks for itself. So with this uh, virtual fundraiser, as Steve mentioned, we're, we're doing things uh, for the first time. And uh, our goal is really to sustain the critical work of this organization. Uh, particularly in this time of crisis. And so to do so, we'll be interspersing uh, brief videos like the one you just saw that really explain, you know, project by project, area by area, the work of this organization. Many of you are familiar, but you'll get up to date with the great work that this organization is doing, as well as the, the many uh, leading powerful voices that we've come to expect uh, who, who really have uh, a passion for the work of PCRF, so we'll be hearing from, from them as well. Uh, as you can see right here over my shoulder, uh, very uh, explicit and easy instructions on how to donate. Uh, the benefit of this is, you know, doing it online. Uh, we don't have to go to an event to make this happen. Uh, it's just a, your donation is a few clicks away. So if you're in the US, uh, it's as simple as starting off a, a series of text messages and outside of the US, uh, going to the website or, or calling the phone number. So we'll jump into uh, the next video. Uh, we're really honored uh, to have the uh, support. Uh, many of you know Dr. Hanan Arshlawi, uh, distinguished uh, scholar, legislator, supporter, activist. And so let's, uh, let's start with her video. PCRF is a remarkable organization. It is one that is based on reaching out to Palestinian children, to providing them with hope, with health, with healing, and to telling them that they are not alone. PCRF has been working for decades, but it has also provided uh, the Palestinian children and Palestinian communities everywhere with a sense of certainty that they are not alone. PCRF is made up of a large number of volunteers, people who host uh, children, Palestinian children in their homes, doctors and nurses who treat them, hospitals who take them in, also groups of uh, medical professionals who come to Palestine and serve, and uh, fundraisers, regular uh, Palestinians, Palestinian Americans, Americans, people who feel that this is an area where we cannot leave Palestinian children alone or abandoned. And all this started at the initiative of one person, a person of courage, a person of principle and integrity, who has given so much. Steve Sosby, Palestine appreciates you. Palestinian children owe you a great deal. And we are extremely proud to be part of this amazing endeavor. Humanitarian Projects and Programs. PCRF 
CCRF is on the ground with field workers and offices all over the West Bank, Gaza Strip, Lebanon, and Jordan to provide urgent humanitarian relief to thousands of sick and injured children each year. Over the past two months, we've run dozens of projects in response to the coronavirus pandemic, providing thousands of people food and infection control supplies, as well as COVID-19 testing kits, PPE protection gear, and the purchasing of x-ray machines for hospitals. So Steve, um, you know, I know that uh, this has been uh, a particularly uh, critical time. Uh, are you able to share a little bit of, you know, where you are, and what's happening, and what's going on in, in today's crisis? Yeah, thank you, Nassim. Before I start, I just want to make one thing clear. This is an organization of thousands of volunteers. It's by no means a one-man show. On the contrary, this the only success that we have as an organization is because of people, our chapters, our board members, people like yourself, Nassim. So I'm a little embarrassed by what Dr. Hanan said because this is an organization of thousands of people. It's not a one-man show by any imagination. But to answer your question, I'm in the epicenter of the COVID coronavirus outbreak here in Bethlehem in the Beit Jala Hospital. And over two months ago, this is where the first cases were detected. <clears throat> and the Ministry of Health here and the Palestinian government did a great job shutting down the country and uh, containing the spread. Uh, but uh, the risk here, the containment is the big challenge for the Palestinians. Once there's a large scale outbreak is when we're really going to be unable to deal with um, the, 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 the treatment phase. The Palestinians don't have the resources, they don't have the infrastructure, they don't have the capacity to take on a large number of coronavirus cases. So the containment is crucial and so far it's been working, but there's no virus in, uh, in sight yet for this disease and therefore we don't know uh, when we're going to be able to relax a little bit. With that being said, um, our organization here on the ground is doing so many different kinds of projects. You heard some of them in the video, and every day we are um, instituting a different kind of relief program, some big, some small. And that's why it's important for everybody who's watching, don't get intimidated by some of the big fundraising programs that we have going on. Any amount of money goes towards providing food, infection control materials, hygiene kits, and even large donations go towards, as we said, medical equipment and medical supplies. So um, yeah, that's, that's the, and I can speak in more detail about that if you'd like, Nassim. Uh, the slide here, uh, so everybody can see um, for, particularly starting with the, the COVID-19 projects, um, you know, what the, what the needs are. Uh, and, you know, I think it would be really useful for people to, to hear directly from you uh, so we can understand uh, how urgent the situation is. Yeah, well, the needs are overwhelming. It's not just a medical issue, it's an economic crisis, just like it is all over the world, in the United States and everywhere else. People aren't working, the country's closed down. And it's particularly a problem here in Palestine because a, lot, a significant amount of the population live day to day. Um, they depend on the income that they make that day, opening their store or working in whatever capacity that they work. So not being able to have that uh, income is affecting the ability of families to feed themselves, feed their children, and provide the basic necessities. So our organization uh, has been providing um, infection control materials for families to be able to make sure their homes uh, areas are clean. We've been providing food for thousands of uh, families all over the West Bank, Gaza, Lebanon, refugee, Lebanese refugee camps, and also in Jordan. We've also been providing, as we mentioned, for the Ministry of Health, testing supplies, testing materials, testing equipment, to enable them to get a grip on how uh, significant this virus spread is here. And we've been working with the hospitals to provide um, some of the protection gear. Here in Beit Jala, I want to introduce you to Dr. Muhammad Najajra, the chief of the department, who just came from his ziftar. And also, I want Dr. Muhammad, can you explain why this is the gear that we purchased for the cancer department here? Our nurse, Abir, is wearing it and is going to demonstrate some of the features for it. What is she wearing and why is this gear important? First, I want to thank the BCR for the personal protective uh, equipment. This is very important uh, to protect our children and to protect ourselves. 
to uh, so we can uh, continue our work here in the department. This is how it, uh, it looks like. It is uh, very complicated, very tough. Each of us is important. We can protect the next from uh, from bringing the virus from uh, other people. Here is the face card. Yes. Yes. This is the the, K, the the N95 mask, and this is the the face shield. Yeah. So in this uh, way, we can uh, uh, protect ourselves. So because we are a very small staff here in the department, uh, and in this way we can uh, protect ourselves. So we can continue uh, giving our care to the children. Thank you, Mohammed. Thank you, Abir, and thank you for. These are they're on the front line uh, all over the world. Our doctors and nurses are the ones who are most at risk um, dealing with this terrible uh, pandemic. So much respect for you, Dr. Muhammad and Abir and all of your staff here in the department. These are some of the things that we're providing. This was provided through donations from PCRF and we're doing that for our cancer department in Gaza as well. Um, we provided the Jordanian Paramedic Society some of the same type of materials just a couple of days ago. So Nassim, the need is overwhelming. It's whether it's in food, whether it's in these type of materials for doctors and nurses who are on the front line, whether it's big equipment that the hospitals don't have. Our organization wants to be able to provide relief here in all these different areas. And we need your help. We need donations. We need support to do that and to respond to this uh, terrible pandemic. Steve, well, uh, you know, the good news is I'm getting updates and uh, donations are already coming in uh, without us really uh, pushing so hard yet. So we have donations from, from all over the world. Uh, Salt Lake uh, or St. Louis City, $5,000. Uh, Laguna Niguel, $1,000. $50 from Fremont. $5,000 from Ohio. $1,000 from Los Angeles. You know, it just indicates that people are giving uh, whatever they're capable of giving. And that's exactly the kind of spirit that, that we need to have. You know, I'll say, uh, Steve, and to everybody that, you know, I woke up this morning really feeling like uh, I needed uh, this event. Uh, we are uh, one community around the world. And it's, it's moments like this where we see the power of that community. We, we support each other, we take care of each other, and we protect each other. And so that PPE, that, that, that personal protective equipment, uh, that's all about ensuring that our children uh, are very brave healthcare workers are kept safe, right? We're here to protect each other. And the only thing standing in the way uh, is just money. And, and that's a very solvable thing. And so I know we all feel uh, a sense of responsibility to provide the kinds of protections that people all around the world are deserving right now, uh, including Palestinians. Uh, we shouldn't have a situation uh, where Palestinians are, are obsess lies, um, all of the work and infrastructure is taken care of. So for all of us, all of us, all we need to do, pick up our phone, uh, open a web page, either way, uh, and just click through and make a contribution or make a pledge, a pledge that will be fulfilled uh, over, over the next year. And the people who are already uh, delivering more, more donations, and I'm seeing them, $2,000 from Kuwait. We have people from all over the world stepping up. Uh, this is a leadership opportunity. You are leading, you are inspiring others. We have over 300 people connected around the world. This is fantastic. Every one of us, regardless of our, our means and how we're feeling at this point, uh, can do our best in this moment. So be that source of momentum. Every one of us can do that. Be that source of of inspiration. And you know what? Invite more friends to join. Uh, it's not too late. We're running an efficient program, but we still have uh, some time left. So with that, um, Steve, if you don't have any more to share, I'd like to, to jump into our next segment here. Let's go down here. Okay. Okay. So we will next uh, be he hearing from a uh, human rights activist, uh, Miko Pelled. And we'll also have a video about uh, uh, the other series of projects that the PCRF is, is, is leading.
Hi, I'm Miko Pellin, and I want to thank you for letting me part of this, uh, letting me be part of this uh, PCRF virtual event. I've been part of lots of PCRF events, and they've always been terrific, uh, including one marathon in Palestine. And I've known Steve for many, many years, and I've been inspired and and impressed and uh, full of admiration for everything that Looks he does good, and, and everything that PCRF does. Uh, does uh, Palestine and the doctors, the volunteers, it's just an incredible organization with incredible people. Um, I'm, I'm muted everywhere. Make a real difference in Palestine, and if there's one organization that we know for sure gets things done, uh, uses the money you have wisely, <laughs> makes a real difference every single day. It is PCRF. So I want to wish you good luck. I want to ask anybody who can contribute to contribute in any way that they can. PCRF, like I said, gets things done. Steve is a man who gets things done. Uh, this is important all the time in Palestine, and particularly now with the spread of the coronavirus and the fear of what a spread, a real, you know, a serious spread of the virus in Palestine might bring about. I just got a phone donation. Um, the work so that PCRF calling. does is even more important. So thank you again, and good luck, and may we all see soon a free Palestine and a Palestine that no longer needs relief. Thank you. Pediatric cancer departments and large infrastructure projects. PCRF identifies deficiencies in the public sector and initiates large projects to improve hospital care by providing equipment and large building efforts throughout the region. In 2013, we opened the first pediatric cancer department in the West Bank and another one in 2019 in Gaza. In addition, we're building a new pediatric intensive care unit and pediatric cardiology department in Ramallah, expanding an ICU in Janine, rebuilding an emergency room in Hebron, and a new OR in Tulkarem, as well as supplying hospitals and clinics in Lebanon and Jordan's refugee camps. Okay, Steve, so as we go into our uh, next segment here, uh, it would be great uh, if you could highlight some of the, the infrastructure and work in the, the cancer departments. I think, Steve, you're still muted. Can you unmute me? Okay. There you go. So, yeah, thank you. Um, so, yeah. The infrastructure projects of PCR is one of the more recent uh, areas that we've been growing into, and we feel it's really important to take on these aspects of uh, the health sector, addressing some of the deficiencies in the health sector here, because we believe very strongly this is part of a contribution to the Palestinian struggle, to the Palestinian movement, which is to build more independent, sustainable services, particularly in the health sector. And here in the cancer department, I'm standing in um, the Huda Al Masri Pediatric Cancer Department, which we open as our first major infrastructural project seven years ago, uh, named after our co-founder, uh, my first wife, Huda al -Masri. Um, So I'm very honored and very privileged to, to be in this department tonight for this event. Um, I'm also, it's a, it's a, we go full circle. My, my wife, Huzina Salma, my current wife, is a pediatric oncologist who volunteers here. So the organization really um, has taken on these aspects of, uh, of our res of a responsibility here, a national responsibility, because before we built this department, every one of these kids who's now in the department being treated had to cross military checkpoints, had to go past barbed wire, had to leave their families for treatment that they now can get by Palestinian doctors in a Palestinian hospital for free. Good quality treatment, some of the best treatment available, comparable to anywhere else in the world. The survival rate here, the success rate is very high. Uh, so this kind of work in this department and the one we built in cancer, uh, in Gaza, excuse me, for pediatric oncology as well, the Dr. Musa and Suhaila Nasser Pediatric Cancer Department, which was named after our co-founders, Dr. Musa and Suhaila Nasser from Los Angeles. Those are significant contributions to the Palestinian movement, to the Palestinian issue, because we're building sustainable independent health services here. We're de reducing dependency. And we take care of everything. We don't give money 
to the Ministry of Health or to the government here to do it. We have a committee on our board who oversees every aspect of how every dollar is spent. So there's a, a paper trail. So everything is transparent. So we follow all international standards for procurement and financial uh, accountability. Uh, so we're very proud to, to demonstrate kind of a very high level of transparency. And at the same time, as Nico said, uh, we get things done. Uh, and here's a perfect example of it. Seven years, we, we sustain this department. We have a social worker here full time. We run all kinds of programs in these departments for the kids every day. We don't just build them and leave them. Uh, and that shows an accountability on our part as well. Great, thank you. Thanks for that, that overview. It's, uh, you know, it's been such a, a journey. Uh, the organization had a vision and a lot of determination. Uh, and is really making, you know, just a, just a tremendous impact. You know, I think that, you know, it's worth, worth reflecting that as we have, you know, hundreds of people gathered here at this moment at a time where uh, we've been, you know, forced to, to physically distance uh, ourselves, um, that we're coming together. We're coming together in this moment. We're transcending uh, borders and boundaries and things that have been meant to uh, divide our community over time. And, and that's an opportunity for us uh, to, to have agency, to, to take control of the situation that we're in. Uh, the point that Steve made about not uh, being dependent on others, uh, this is an act of, of self-reliance and our people are, are a naturally resilient people. And so this is, our chance. This is our chance to, to make a difference. So, you know, picking up that phone right now, uh, it's super simple to do. People are doing it. Pledges from Carlsbad, uh, from Wisconsin, from Baltimore. The pledges continue to come in. Contributions continue to come in. Uh, our community and our connection uh, is actually a strength. Our diaspora is a real strength in this moment. And we should, you know, fully take advantage of of this opportunity that we have. Uh, it's really, it's really on our shoulders to do this. We have a great organization that just, you know, needs the resources. They know how to put the resources to work, and this is our opportunity right now. Uh, with that, we'll jump very quickly into the next video, and uh, we're going to hear from uh, Imam Khalid Latif who is the chaplain at the Islamic Center at New York City. Please mute. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. This is Khalid Latif from the Islamic Center at New York University. I want to extend Ramadan greetings to each and every one of you. Uh, and I hope for those who are observing the month or those who are simply supporters and friends of those who might be observing, uh, that each and every one of you is one having of you a blessing and 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 well and keeping safe wherever you are in the world right now. We do everything that we can to support the amazing work that the men and women at the Palestinian Children's Relief Fund are doing simply because it's the right thing to do. So where you can support, please do. Where you can be a means of healing, please embrace it to be elevated to a stature where God uses you as a means to feed his creation, clothe his creation, provide shelter to his creation, give hope to his creation, give strength to his creation, be merciful with his creation, to love his creation. That is not a station you want to leave behind. And here, the beneficiary is not simply just these young, beautiful angels, children, who really, what is it that they have ever done to anybody? But the biggest game is going to be for you and I, because would we really want to have a heart that is not moved to help a young person who is simply just trying to live with the same aspiration and dreams that we are. So please do give what you can and give even more than that. God willing, it'll be a means of benefit.
for our young sisters and brothers in Palestine. In Palestine. May God bless each and every one of you. May he make these nights of Ramadan a means of increase. May he guide and bless us all. Wallahu ta'ala alam wa billahi tawfiq. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu. So as, as we know, uh, Palestinian society is, is very diverse, very pluralistic of many faiths. Uh, many of us are observing Ramadan right now, and this opportunity could not be uh, better times. Uh, those, were, those were quite inspirational words. And we know that Ramadan is not only about uh, what we abstain from doing, uh, but actually what we end up doing, the good deeds that we do. Really this time of reflection uh, creates a, a time for us to be our best self and, uh, and a time for action uh, and a time for impact. Uh, and so, so that's the opportunity that is in front of us right now. Uh, and there's just no better time to do it in particular than in these last 10 days of Ramadan uh, where blessings are, are at their peak uh, the, the bounty is at its peak, and uh, for every uh, donation that is made, uh, there are so many blessings to, uh, to both uh, participate in the giving of and in the receiving of. You know, we know in the Muslim tradition uh, that it is said, uh, one who gives uh, does not find a, a decrease in wealth. Uh, as a result of all the blessings that come with that giving. So this is a special time, a time where uh, our hearts, which sometimes become hard in the normal course of life, uh, we take a step back. And so with that, you can take a step back in this moment and go from being a, uh, an observer to being a participant, to pick up that phone, okay, and start engaging in that series of text prompts uh, or go to the website, you can do it right now. Be part of the special thing that's happening right now as we speak. Uh, we will turn to our next video segment. We, we wanna make this fundraiser as efficient as possible. And so uh, many of you know uh, Dr. Mads Gilbert, uh, somebody who we think of as, as deserving of uh, a, a Nobel Prize uh, for the kind of work that, that he's done, the kind of impact that he's had. Uh, a great humanitarian physician. And so we'll hear uh, some, some very powerful words from Dr. Gilbert. Dear friends of Palestine, dear friends of Gaza, dear friends of the Palestinian people, and dear friends of the PCRF. The pandemic is affecting everyone, not at least the good people of the United States. But the situation is in particularly bad for the Palestinians, as it is for everybody who are under occupation, siege, or refugee situations. But for Gazans and for the Gaza families, the situation is extremely difficult during this Ramadan. In Gaza, the healthcare system has been under constant undermining for the last 13 years of siege and blockade. It's lacking everything. It has shortage of specialized health staff, drugs and equipment. And this is all compounded by the electricity cuts and the lack of salaries for the staff. The strain on Gaza's health system has been further aggravated over the last two years from the heavy tolls and the large influx of patients coming from the Great March of Return. And on top of that, as you all know, the population, as well as the whole healthcare system, is still carrying heavy burdens from the large, large losses of lives, limbs and health from the 2014 attack on Gaza. I know because I was there. During my last visit to Gaza in February this year, I saw an increasing optimism, but that was before the pandemic hit Gaza. More than ever, we need to support the good healthcare system. We need to support the Palestinian children in Gaza. 
we need to support all of those children who are the targets of and the victims of the deficiencies, the man-made deficiencies in the Palestinian healthcare system in Gaza. So I'm proud today to carry my PCRF shirt and I ask you all, please donate from your heart, help support the Palestinian children in Gaza and help make also this Ramadan a Ramadan with a shred of light for the people of Gaza. Shukran Shasila and God bless you. Volunteer medical missions to the Middle East. PCRF is the main nonprofit organization in the world running hundreds of volunteer international medical missions a year to the Middle East, providing thousands of injured and sick patients free care while training local doctors in all specialties of medicine. Missions save lives, improve the health sector, and keep millions of dollars in the public sector. Great. Uh, Dr. Khalid, uh, this is a, a, an area I know you've worked with, uh, uh, with Dr. Gilbert, uh, and you've been a, a part of so many missions. Uh, can you take a moment to, to, to share uh, what's happening and the, the kind of impact that PCRF has had? Absolutely, Nassim. Uh, missions are actually the backbone of PCRF. Uh, by taking missions to Palestine, we can treat thousands of children by flying a small team of doctors there. Just last year, PCRF flew over 175 missions were done in Palestine, both in the West Bank and the Gaza Strip in the refugee camps in Lebanon, and also we do missions to Jordan to help our, uh, our Syrian brothers and sisters, the refugees there. These missions on average will treat, will provide specialized surgical care to about on average 3,000 children a year. So they give a tremendous impact. Uh, unfortunately, right now our missions have been furloughed. Uh, in the last few months, we've had tens of missions canceled. And obviously, as you know, if these missions canceled, the need is just gonna become greater and greater once uh, travel restrictions are lifted and missions can go back again. So this is really one of our core programs is these missions and we are all itching. All of our doctors are used to going some twice or three times a year. Myself will go three times a year. We're sitting here. I just missed a mission in April. We're all itching for these travel restrictions to be lifted so we can go back and make this difference in these patients' lives. And patients are already reaching out to us from our last mission where we had a cleft mission set up in April and many of these children's families are already asking when we will be back. Hopefully, we'll be on the other end soon and be back to resume these missions in all specialties. So this is a very important aspect of what we do in addition to everything that's already been highlighted. That's right. That's right. That, you know, that work is so critical, but it also says in this time of need that that local capacity, that local capability, therefore, is just so important. And, and that's, I think, one of the best things about PCRF is that it's really empowering local communities uh, to serve each other, serve ourselves so well. And then, of course, these missions, as soon as they can resume, will just be, be vital to people on the ground. Um, you know, I have an a exciting update. We're at already uh, $60,000 that's been raised. Keep the momentum going. We don't have a lot of time left. And so, you know, now is the time to jump in and make that contribution. And if you're moved, make that second contribution based on what you've seen here so far. So with that, we'll turn to our next video uh, from uh, our unapologetically proud Palestinian member of Congress, Rashida Talib. Hi everyone, I'm Congresswoman Rashida Talib. It's truly an honor to uplift the important work of Palestine Children's Relief Fund. This is a humanitarian organization that is needed more than ever during this global pandemic. So I hope you will join us in supporting their virtual fundraiser to making sure again that they're on the ground helping save lives. So again, thank you so much. And I'm so again, really honored to celebrate all the volunteers and the staff of PCRF. Sending injured children abroad for free care. 
CRF is the main nonprofit in the world sending sick and injured children from the Middle East abroad for treatment they can't get in their homeland. Over 2,000 children have traveled abroad since 1991 for free care, saving lives, and helping children recover from birth defects and war injuries. Your donation helps to support the cost of sending kids abroad for treatment they can't get at home. Okay, I'm getting uh, very exciting. <laughs> You are an amazing group because uh, the numbers have grown uh, and it's even hard to track these zeros. We have 10,000 from Twinsburg, Ohio. I didn't know there is a Twinsburg, Ohio, but I'm very thankful that there is. Uh, thank you. Uh, 10,000 from uh, Dublin. Uh, I hope I have this right. I'm seeing, I don't know if that's $35, but it looks like $35,000 from LA. Um, I'm seeing another $15,000 pledge. I'm seeing $100 from uh, Piscataway. Forgive me if I said it wrong, but everybody clearly is reaching in and digging deep now. This is the moment. This is the moment. If you haven't given right now, this is a moment. Be part of this very special moment. Um, one thing that we know is that it's clear, right? We are counting on ourselves. If these capabilities, if these services, if these buildings, these departments, these supplies, these training, if all of that, if somebody else would take care of that, it would have already happened, right? It hasn't happened for a reason. This is really for us. This is for us to make it happen. We cannot sit and wait and think that somebody else will do it. This is all about us. It's all about us in this moment. Um, and so, we we people are 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 contributing and and I, I see it still coming in. We'll provide uh, exciting updates before before we close here. Sara, can you uh, can you come back in? I'm seeing three thousand dollars from from McLean. Um, this is uh, this is a, a, a tremendous outpouring of support and energy and uh, and really speaks to the heart of this organization. Sure does. It sure does. Thank you so much, Nassim, for being with us today and supporting the work that we do. Uh, as always, you are wonderful and your support is truly appreciated uh, from all of us here at the PCRF. Um, again, we're very happy to have everybody tuning in today with us on Zoom, on Facebook Live. What an honor for us to have this opportunity to connect with all of you. We would love to take this opportunity to share with you um, a video uh, that is a combination of introductions from the backbone of the organization, a group of volunteers who work night and day over the years and for many years throughout the year to help us raise funds, to help us spread awareness in their communities, and to help us care for the children that we send abroad for treatment in their communities. We're very grateful to this group of volunteers and we cannot thank them enough. I'm so proud to show this video and share it with you. Here are the faces of our beautiful PCRF chapter volunteers. <laughs> from Atlanta PCRF chapter, nine years strong and going. From the city by the bay, we are the San Francisco Bay Area chapter, active for 20 years. Ramadan Karim. Hello from Beantown, home of the PCRF Boston. Thanks to your generosity, we've been able to host and treat many kids over the past 17 years. Thank you for your support. Please continue donating to the PCRF. From the Queen City of Charlotte, North Carolina. We love the PCRF. Thanks for all support the volunteers. For your support and contributions. Let's all help unlock the doors of healing. From, From the Windy City. City. We are Chicago chapter for 
14 years of growing. Over 10 years running. Over 20 doctors volunteers. Thank you for supporting PCRF. Welcome from the home of the Rock Hall, where the PCRF was established in 1992. Hashtag, this is CLE. My name is Rola and I'm a PCR volunteer here in Columbus, Ohio. Go box. Dallas is big, but our love for PCRF is... Bigger! From the Motor City, we are the PCRF Detroit chapter. Because of our incredible volunteers and supportive community, we've been going strong for 10 years. We are honored to work with the PCRF organization. From Pennsylvania, capital city. We are Harrisburg Chapter, active for a year and a half. Ramadan Mubarak. Ciao from Tuscany. Our Italy Chapter is active for seven years. Lockdown means more people in need. Poor and sick children need us more now than ever. PCRF changes life. Your support is a lifeline to many children. Let's help them stay at home and safe. Makassan, New Jersey Chapter President, and this is why we volunteer for PCRF. From the Big Apple, we are the New York City chapter. We might be PCRF's youngest chapter. But one thing is for sure. Hello from PCRF OSU. Oh, wait. I am. I am. Go Bucks. From the City of Roses, we are the Portland chapter. Active for six years. Hello from the City of Oaks, we are the Raleigh chapter. Because of supporters like yourselves, we have been successful for the last five years, and we look forward for your continued support of the PCRF. Ramadan Kareem! Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Greetings from San Diego, where the first PCRF chapter started in 1993. Thank you to all of you for keeping us strong for the past 27 years. Thank you. Thank you. Many great uh, volunteers. You are the backbone of this organization. Our success, this cancer department, all of the achievements, the thousands of kids that we've been able to treat is thanks to you. Our chapters take care of our kids as host families. They help arrange the treatment for them for free. They take them to their appointments. They raise money to build these projects, to support this organization. They represent the PCRF in their communities. You guys deserve so much thanks and appreciation. So before we end this evening, I wanna just remind you again, your donation is Zakat eligible. Uh, also, uh, please continue to support our work. This is just one evening's fundraising effort, but our work continues on and on. and our uh, needs for support will continue on and on. Uh, thank you all for showing up this evening. Uh, and thank you, Nassim, for taking time out of your busy schedule, as well as Dr. Khaled and everyone else for being here tonight. Um, I just want to have one message. Uh, we built this department seven years ago. Uh, my first wife, Huda, died 10 years ago. This little girl here in this picture has a message for you in Ramadan. Thank you. Thank you. Ramadan Kareem. Over and out. <laughs>